guys, last round. <clears throat> Welcome again. Everyone is fresh. There's an alarm going off. And um, this is going to be a very brief, hopefully a very brief last conference. conference. And all, all I really want to do is look at the essential features or the devotions that come from St. Faustina, who our Lord gave this, these devotions to her, right? So what are they? Um, and uh, what are the promises attached to them? Okay, so that's what we're going to do, basically. But before I do that, can I read to you the vision of hell? I mean, it's just, I found it, I, was, I read it again, and yeah. And it just makes you never want to commit a mortal sin, one. Plus, you want to work, it makes you work twice as hard for the salvation of souls, you know. All right, so let me just go through that real quick. So if you want to read it yourself, it's in paragraph. So notebook two, notebook two of her diary, paragraph 741, 741. This is St. Faustina writing this. It's quite long, but we'll go try to finish it. Today, I was led by an angel to the chasms of hell. It is a place of great torture. How awesomely large and extensive it is. The kinds of tortures I saw, the first torture that constitutes hell, is the loss of God. The second is perpetual remorse of conscience. The third is that one's condition will never change. The fourth is the fire that will penetrate the soul without destroying it. A terrible suffering, since it is a purely spiritual fire lit by God's anger. The fifth torture is continual darkness in a terrible suffocating smell. And despite the darkness, the devils and the souls of the damned see each other and all the evil, both of other, others and their own. The sixth torture is the constant company of Satan. The seventh torture is horrible despair, hatred of God, vile words, curses, and blasphemies. These are the tortures suffered by all the damned together. But that is not the end of the sufferings. There are special tortures destined for particular souls. These are the torments of the senses. Each soul undergoes terrible and indescribable sufferings related to the manner in which it has sinned. There are caverns and pits of torture where one form of agony differs from another. I would have died at the very sight of these tortures if the om omnipotence of God had not supported me. Let the sinner know that he will be tortured throughout all eternity in those senses which he made use of to sin. I am writing this at the command of God so that no soul may find an excuse by saying there is no hell or that nobody has ever been, has ever been there. And so no one can say what it is like. I, Sister Faustina, by the order of God, have visited the abysses of hell so that I might tell souls about it and testify to its existence. I cannot speak about it now, but I have received the command from God to leave it in writing. The devils were full of hatred for me, but they had to obey me at the command of God. What I have written is but a pale shadow of the things I saw. But I noticed one thing, that most of the souls there are those who disbelieved that there is a hell. When I came to, I could hardly recover from the, from the fright. How terribly souls suffer there. Consequently, I pray even more fervently for the conversion of sinners. 
I incessantly plead God's mercy upon them. Oh my Jesus, I would rather be in agony until the end of the world amidst the greatest sufferings than offend you by the least sin. That is her description of hell. Okay. So brothers, as Fulton J. Sheen would say, I mean, uh, St. Jacinta, the one from Fatima, also saw hell and she was so moved by it. She offered all her sacrifices and prayers for those souls who who have the danger of going to hell, you know. So, I mean, it's not, um, it should motivate us to, you know, pray more, to avoid sin, mortal sin, first and foremost, and also pray and offer up our sacrifices for, especially for our loved ones, right? So that they don't go to hell. Very good, okay. So now let's go into the devotions of the divine mercy. So summing up, what we've seen so far, if you have been sleeping this whole time, <laughs> I don't want to say anything out loud, but you know what I mean. He had a good sleep. He had a good sleep. Coming back, coming back. So if you don't remember, you absolutely remember nothing, let me just sum it up. The message of the divine mercy is easy as A, B, C. A, we have to ask for mercy, right? So our Lord tells Sister Faustina, unless souls come and draw from my mercy, they will never have peace. We have to ask for mercy, A. B, we have to be merciful, Divine mercy in action. Be merciful in deed, word, and prayer. And C, we have to completely trust in Jesus. A, B, C. Very easy. Okay? So that's the essence of the message of divine mercy. How about devotion? The devotional part. If you want to... Um, so there's A, B, C for the message. And for the devotion, Finch, F-I-N-C-H, F, the feast of divine mercy, I, the image of the divine mercy, N, the novena of the divine mercy, C, the chaplet of divine mercy, and H, the hour of mercy. Have you guys heard of that before? That's what we're going to go through really quick, okay? Because these things were from our Lord and was given to Sister Faustina. So let's go through F for, a, for, for a really quick. So the Feast of Divine Mercy. And if you want to, you know, there, there's a lot of resources, but this is great. Father Gately, this is a good one. Divine Mercy Explained keys to the message and devotion. And this is probably theologically the best one ever. Okay? The essential features of the devotion to the divine mercy. Let's look at them really quick. So let's go to F. If you want to tap into the graces that our Lord offers, we have these to draw from. The feast what is the feast? Feast of Divine Mercy, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Have you heard of that? Divine Mercy Sunday. It's, that's, what it's, that's, what, that's what this is. So our Lord asked St. Faustina to have this feast instituted. And it already existed. And St. Faustina told our Lord, you know, they tell me that there's already such a feast. And so why should I talk about it? Jesus responded to St. Faustina. And who knows anything about this feast? No one. So that's why he asked for it. And he specifically told her, on that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are opened. 
I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. Now, regarding Divine Mercy Sunday, this is the most important part. Our Lord told St. Faustina this, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Let me repeat that. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Now, brothers, this is not merely a plenary indulgence. This is something more, okay? And the great theologian that um, uh, explains this, he actually calls it almost a second baptism, right? Here's how he explains it. All right. So this is a most exceptional grace promised by Jesus for the Feast of the Divine Mercy. It's something considerably greater than a plenary indulgence because this consists only of the remission of temporal punishments for, for sins committed, but is never the remission of guilt itself. So this promise, in other words, he says, is almost a second baptism. It is obvious that in order to effect a complete forgiveness of sin and the punishment, the Holy Communion received on the Feast of the Divine Mercy must not only be partaken of worthily, but it also must fulfill the basic requirements of the Divine Mercy devotion, So, which means trust in Jesus and deeds of mercy. Okay? So that's the feast. And you know who did this? Who instituted this feast? John Paul II. He shocked the world when he did this. It was during the canonization of St. Faustina. And he said, from now on, uh, I think it's the Sunday after Easter, will be known as Divine Mercy Sunday. And you know what he told one of the, one of the guys he, privately after? Huh? Yeah. But he said, this is the happiest day of my life. This is the happiest day of my life. John Paul II, after he, he, he did that. Incredible. All right. How about the image of, so we're, we got F-I, image of the divine mercy. So this is the image that our Lord uh, told St. Saint, Saint Faustina to have made, right? And um, yeah, this, the image, as you can see, is right there. Where's the page? Where's the page? Where's the page? Okay. This is what uh, our Lord told St. Faustina. I am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces. That vessel is this image with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. By means of this image, I shall be granting many graces to souls. So this image basically has a double function. It is, number one, a means of grace, okay? It's a means of grace, an instrument through which graces are distributed. But also, also, the image is to be a sign which is to bring to mind Christ's demand for performing acts of mercy. Remember how we talked about spiritual Alzheimer's? We tend to forget. The image, this image in particular, reminds us of that, right? That we have to do acts of mercy as well. All right? We're just going through the basics here through the basics because we just want to touch on them really quickly. Again, if you want to dive into this, Divine Mercy Explain. You guys have that? Is that Father, Make, Mother, uh, Father Michael Gately? 
He's, I mean, these, all these guys are, are awesome. But if you want, you know, if you want a theological explanation, nobody is better than this guy. Reverend Ignacy Rozhiski. Okay, because Carol Wojtyla actually commissioned this theologian to study the diaries. Initially, he didn't want to do it. Then he flipped a couple of pages, and he's like, wow. What's his next title? So this one is, this is, okay, so he wrote, he, he, he studied it, and he wrote a 500-page uh, book, basically. And this is the condensed version, slightly, of his study, okay? And he was commissioned by John Paul II when he was still cardinal. So this is really the, this is the go-to. The, the title is Essential Features of the Devotion to the Divine Mercy. Reverend Ignacy, I-G-N-A-C-Y, and his last name is R O Z. Y C K I. Read that, read that, read that. It's incredible. He explains it really well. Okay, so F I, what's the next one? N. And what does that stand for? Novena. No, huh? Yeah, you guys already know this stuff, right? Yeah, so, uh, so the Novena, and our Lord says this. Wait, where is it at? Oh, number nine, number nine. Novena, what is it in Novena? Okay. Our Lord says to St. Faustina, by this Novena, I will grant every possible grace to souls. And when should I begin? Yeah, Good Friday. Okay, I mean, that's a very basic one. Let's, let's move on to the chaplet, okay? The chaplet of divine mercy. Have you ever prayed the chaplet? You just already prayed it yesterday. Ah! I lead it every Sunday. Is that right? It's a powerful, powerful prayer, which you, which you pray on regular rosary beads, okay? And the thing is, it only takes what? Five minutes. Seven minutes. It's a great prayer. And it's also, we were talking about the Mass yesterday, right? The prayers draw from the Mass. You know, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, what is that if not the passion, right? The passion of all, that's why it's so powerful. And um, it's very easy to pray. Very easy to pray. So that is C, the chaplet, about seven minutes. I don't think, okay, here's uh, our Lord's words. Our Heavenly Father said to Saint Faustina, when this chaplet is said by the bedside of a dying person, unfathomable mercy envelops the soul. In the very depths of my tender mercy are moved for the sake of the sorrowful passion of my son. Jesus also comforting promises to those who pray the chaplet. Say unceasingly the chaplet that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. And on and on and on. Our Lord wants us to go to heaven. And he tries to make it as easy as possible. But we have to cooperate, right? Last one, because we have five minutes left. H. What is H? The hour of mercy. 3 p.m. Why is it 3 p.m.? Amen. So let's just close this and I'm going to go off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Our Lord says to St. Faustina, 3 o'clock, Jesus promised that this 
It's a huge time of grace. This is the hour of great mercy for the whole world. I will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in virtue of my passion. Beautiful. Let me just end, end with this. It's interesting how at, with the Sacred Heart devotion, it's associated with the first Fridays, right? So once a month. But Divine Mercy is every single day, 3 p.m., right? That's a humongous difference. So what sets this apart from other devotions, the Divine Mercy? What do you guys think? What do you think? Why, why, is it, why is it different from other devotions? Because of her writing and what she saw. Yeah. I mean, I would say this. It's devotion to the divine mercy. The divine mercy. So it's identified with our Lord himself, right? So it's just not any other devotion. The message and the devotions that St. Faustina has handed to the church and which John Paul basically universalized because he canonized her, he instituted the Feast of Divine Mercy, so for the universal church. So it's not only something local now, right? It's much more, it's offered to the universal church now. So it is, it's something for, for the whole church. And to draw from these, these uh, devotions, we have these, um, the finch, feast, the image, the novena, the chaplet, the hour, to remind us what Christ has done for us. Amen. Good. Is there anything else? Great group. Thank you guys for coming here. It's been a great pleasure. Hopefully you guys... Keep delving into the spiritual life. It's, you know, our faith is beautiful, intelligent, and it's the real deal. It's the real deal. And the more you go into it, it's just the more beautiful it becomes. And I thank Heath for kind of forcing me to prepare this, even if there was not a lot of time, because now, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start reading much more of St. Faustina. So thank you, Heath. Thank you for, for your patience. Um, you've exercised a great deed of mercy, of uh, you know, bearing patiently with those who are annoying. And um, I wish you guys the best, and I'll see you for Mass. Amen? Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. St. Faustina, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.